I think it's about making sure that the right content is available to the people who need it at the time that they need it and being able to allow allow people to self-service, allow people to come along and get the information they need, find it easily in a range of different ways and for a way that works for them. Welcome to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast, where Gallery Ram Kumar of Document 360 finds the best SaaS self-service knowledge bases in the world and then interviews their creators. Let's get started with today's episode. Good day, everyone. Our guest today is Lana Brentley, Senior Technical Writer, Shippet. Welcome, Lana, to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. It's great to be here. Great, great. So, Lana, please help us understand a little bit more about yourself and how did you get into this professional journey and uh, how are you enjoying it, basically? I love it. I love tech writing. I think... I think I was unwittingly preparing myself to be a tech writer even before I knew what one was. Um, when I was very little, I was actually convinced that the, the the blank pages in the back of printed books were for your own stories. So I've actually written constantly right from day one. I was also one of those kids, though, I, I used to pull all my toys apart and I asked a million questions. So when you consider the kind of work that I do now, my, my work now is to pull things apart and then write down how they work. So it actually feels very much like something I've always done in some fashion. Um, by the by the time I got to university, I still had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. And so I ended up studying business with a double major in marketing and information systems just because they were interesting. And it turns out that they were almost perfect for technical writing, even if I didn't know it at the time. So uh, I've always said that you fall backwards into technical writing, and that is very much true for me. It was many, many years later, I started working as a, an office manager for a startup, and they needed some documentation written. So this CTO asked me to try my hand, and I did, and he suggested I consider technical writing as a career, and I've just never looked back. I've been there for a long time now, and I, I found my happy place. I'm not going anywhere. That's a great story to share, Lana. Thank you so much. Now, in layman's term, um, I'm sure we understand the definition of information architecture, uh, but when it comes to technical writing, how do you define it? And is it any different to the information architecture? I think uh, it can be more or less broad than information architecture for websites. I think it's about making sure that the right content is available to the people who need it at the time that they need it okay. and being able to allow allow people to self-service allow people to come along and get the information they need find it easily in a range of different ways and for a way that works for them mm -hmm. so i think um in comparison to the term for information architecture for website design it's, it's similar definitely but it's, it's on a slightly different scale all right. I also came across an article where it says technical writing is information architecture. Do you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Technical writing is all about getting the information in the right order, in the right place, in a way that's easy to find in a, a logical progression. So, yes, I absolutely agree. They are they're quite symbiotic. Right. In that sense, uh, what could be the potential steps that's involved in developing an art information architecture? Um, it's about, first of all, recognizing your audience and who's actually coming to your content. And for Ship It, that's actually really complicated. We've got a, a really broad range of audience types and different people who are seeking answers of very different kinds as well. So it's about understanding the audience, understanding the kind of content they need, the kind of problems they're trying to solve at any given moment, and giving them a, a logical path through the content. Right. Now, um, you spoke about uh, how you design the information architecture based on who's consuming it, which is very interesting. Now, um, in your opinion, while designing this information architecture, how different is it as a lone writer versus being part of a large team? Like, do you work as part of the large team? Uh, or, uh, yeah, if you can help me understand how, how does that work? 
I'm a single writer at the moment, but I have worked as part of large teams and as single writer in the past. Um, one of the things I've done a lot over recent years has come in as the first writer for an organisation and built out their, their content organisation for them. Uh, there are a lot of differences. The main difference being if you're part of a large team, I'll a lot of those processes and procedures already exist. Mm -hmm. When you're a single writer, it's important to come in and develop those. Even it's easy to ignore them because you're the only yeah. one and you're the one yeah. who's doing it all. But it, developing those processes and procedures is important so that the people who come after you can uh, can, can come in and, and pick those up. It's a form of, of maintenance, I guess. Yeah, great. I I would say both has their own pros and cons, and um... absolutely, <laughs> I enjoy both in its in their own ways. But I also enjoy that that process of going from one to many as well. Yeah, lovely. It's always good to have experience in both. So, uh, as I said, it gives different flavors and different experiences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, just to elaborate a bit more on the information architecture side of things. Now, um, from your experience, is uh, can you share some tips and crucial aspects that the listeners could note down while developing or designing this information architecture? I think the most important thing to remember is that different audiences consume content in different ways. Uh, and I, I mentioned before that the Ship It platform has a range of different audiences and we have both a web-based user interface as well as an API. And so people are coming at the, the content in different ways. So it's really important to understand how they're interacting with our platform and what different levels of knowledge they may have. We also have people coming from our platform who might not know who we are, why we're mm -hmm. emailing them, or why we're involved at all. They just want to know where their package is. Uh, so being able to address all those different audiences and being able to understand the, the workflows and the problems that they're experiencing at any given moment through their journey, to be able to, to follow those paths through and note down where they're the information that they're looking for and the way that they might be trying to look for that, whether it's a Google search or search on site or uh, left nav or any number of, you know, AI tools or whatever. So being able to serve the content that they require at any time is, and being able to think through all those different options. Uh, people do unexpected things sometimes. So uh, being, being able to, to, to think through those different ways that people are addressing the content is really important. Very good, very good. Yeah, uh, I was just, it reminds me of the recent recording I did with another guest in the podcast that um, they were also emphasizing that audience is the most important thing, whom you write for, how they consume, where they consume from, will determine what level of information you put in your documentation. So of, I think you're talking course. the same language to hear. <laughs> very much so. This this. Ship it especially has a lot of different audiences to manage. Um, yeah, from delivery information and workflow and UI details, how information flows between our platform and other platforms, whether they're after API developer documentation, there's there's a, just a massive range of, of, of content that we need to make sure we're delivering to the right place at the right time. Right. Yeah. Great. So let's move on to our rapid fire uh, round questions, uh, Lana. So... I'm sure you must be reading a lot of contents either through web or through books. So any particular resource that you'd like to talk about? I love the Write the Docs community. Uh, I've been massively involved with the Write the Docs community for so long, and I'm sure I'm not the first person on the podcast to, to, to spruik them. I was lucky enough to speak at the Write the Docs Australia conference late last year, and I am very much looking forward to uh, attending that again late this year. So Write the Docs is my go-to place for, for all things content. Wow, that's very, very inspiring. So good luck <laughs> for another great conference again this year. Now, what is that one word that comes to your mind when I say documentation? Probably self-service. Uh, making sure that people can get answers to their questions. They just want to get their question answered and move on with their day. They don't want to be bogged down or frustrated or having to call support if they don't have to let's let's just get them the answer they need when they need it so mm -hmm. yeah self-service 
self-service, that's great. My last question to you today is, uh, what is that one piece of documentation related advice you would give to your 20 year old self? I'd like to tell my 20 year old self that it's okay to not know things. Uh, not knowing things means you get to find stuff out. And I think not knowing things is like a tech writing superpower because that's how we best represent our readers by by not knowing things and going in and asking the dumb questions and then writing down the answers to that. So mm -hmm. that that's the tech writing superpower. So I'd like my 20 year, 20 year old self to to know that she doesn't need to know everything. All right. <laughs> Just learn as you progress. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Just every every day is a, a new learning opportunity you're always going to learn more and you're never going to know everything <laughs> yes and that's that's very true yeah um, nobody knows everything it just comes as as, as they grow <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> nice so lana i think i've um i've done with my questions but uh, please feel free to add anything that i missed to ask you in this session and uh, the but you'd like our audiences to be aware of I think it's important to remember that there's two sides to to documentation. There's the helping the customers get the information they need, but also the benefits to the company. Um, allowing customers to self-service across a range of uh, different problems or queries has benefits for us as a company, but also is just a better experience from our customers as well. So there's there's two sides to this coin, mm -hmm. uh, being able to help help customers self service, as I said, but also there's benefits from a from a corporate perspective as well. So um yeah, there's two sides to to the tech writing coin. All right, that's a new thought uh, to think. That's great. So Lana, thank you so much for your time. I know it's a bit too late for you in the day, but I appreciate uh, you spending this time with us and uh, sharing your unique experiences, particularly on the information architecture side. And uh, good luck with your projects and you take care. Thank you. Thank you. It's absolutely my pleasure. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Please head to iTunes, rate and provide honest feedback on the podcast. See you next week.